In television, there are two common show formats, single camera and multi-camera. Single cam scripts will look pretty familiar if you've watched the rest of this series. But multi-cam scripts are in a whole different ballpark and you absolutely need to know which one you're playing in. You might guess that single camera shows, commonly shortened to single cam or rarely called one camera shows, shoot with a single camera. And that multi-camera shows, AKA multi-cam or three cam shoot with, well, multiple cameras. At one point in TV history, that may have been true. Scripted shows were filmed like movies with a single camera capturing performances that would be directly edited together for broadcast. But the process was rigid and time consuming. So in come Desi Arnaz and cinematographer Carl Frund, commonly credited with introducing the multi-camera approach on I Love Lucy. The story goes that Desi wanted the premium look of film, but with the live show environment where Lucille Ball's comedic performances could thrive. But to get the coverage they needed to make sure none of those live moments were missed, they needed three cameras to film the scene from different angles. In reality, the first multicam sitcom was probably Amos and Andy, which aired just a few months earlier. And the shift likely had more to do with technological advancements and cost savings. But the live studio audience I Love Lucy popularized for sitcoms is what truly continues to differentiate single and multicam shows to this day. Because while single camera shows are still filmed very much like movies, it's somewhat common to roll multiple cameras for coverage or a difficult to repeat shot on any production. And it's not like we can see the cameras anyway, so how can you tell a quote unquote single cam and multicam project apart? Single cams can be one hour dramas or half hour comedies. And they're shot on backlots, on location, and on sets and sound stages, but even then without a live audience. Multi-camera shows are pretty much always half-hour situational comedies, also known as sitcoms, that are largely filmed on sound stages with multiple cameras all in front of a studio audience where a live laugh track is captured. So if the show has a laugh track like The Big Bang Theory, or How I Met Your Mother, it's usually considered a multi-cam series. If it doesn't, like Breaking Bad or The Office, then you've probably got a single cam show. But the differences only become more obvious when we start to look at the scripts, sometimes called teleplays in TV writing. All teleplays differ from feature length scripts in two obvious ways. The first, well, length. The terms one hour drama and half hour comedy refer to the run times of the shows, including commercials. And those advertisements are what create the other big difference, act breaks. While feature scripts have acts structurally speaking, fade out, end of act one, act two, exterior, Tatooine, wasteland. They aren't expressly written on the page. But TV shows need somewhere to put their commercials, so the act breaks are often explicitly written into the script. I might be back, Morna. I might actually be back. Act two, exterior, downtown LA, day. In teleplays, the ends of the acts are designated by a page break, with the name of the new act written at the top of the following page, usually centered, underlined, and spaced a few lines above the next scene. Some writers also indicate the end of the act before the page break. Dean turns to Sam and Gordon. They all share a look, speechless, then. So, uh, I guess I gotta buy you that drink. Blackout, end of act one. If you want to include it, just be sure it isn't orphaned onto an otherwise blank sheet. If it's the first item on a page, simply bring the previous paragraph of dialogue or description along with it. One hour scripts commonly begin with a teaser, also called a cold open, or very rarely a prologue and four or five main acts. While half hour shows often begin with a cold open, followed by three main acts, and sometimes a tag, which is often unmarked or just labeled as another main act. But these structures can vary, and we'll save a deeper dive into them for another video, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. With the rise of streaming services and premium cable channels that made their money on subscriptions rather than ads, a trend developed towards partially or completely leaving act breaks out of teleplays. Betty shuffles into the kitchen. As soon as she's out of sight, Mare escapes like she's just robbed the place. Exterior, Aaron McMenamin's house, establishing, late morning. A single cam script without an act break actually looks identical to a feature length one outside of its one hour or half hour length. And you can use that to your advantage to give a more premium or prestige film-like feel to your script. But there's been a shift back towards explicitly including them as most streaming services now have ad supported tiers. One hour dramas are often referred to as just one hours or dramas because the other half can pretty much always be assumed. The same goes for half hour comedies, but they're often specifically situational comedies, which is where they also get the name sitcom. But the lines between these formats are blurring a bit more these days as dramedies can fall into either runtime. 
Crazy Ex-Girlfriend runs an hour long, while being mostly a comedy first drama, while Atlanta is a half hour despite some heavier drama. And FX's The Patient was nothing but a drama, yet had a half hour runtime. The format didn't work for everyone, but it's a sign that networks are experimenting more and more with runtimes and genre expectations. While the average feature length screenplay usually runs 95 to 120 pages, a one hour script usually lands around the 55 page mark, while single cam sitcoms usually land around 30. These all roughly follow the one page, one minute maxim. But it's common to see slightly higher page counts for pilots, which are the first episodes of a series and often need to introduce more locations and characters than subsequent episodes. Streaming and premium cable shows tend to have more variants in either direction since they don't have to stick to strict time slots. But it's still rare to see extreme changes to runtime since current audiences are so used to one hour and half hour structures. Multicam sitcoms on the other hand break hard from the one page one minute rule, usually running about 50 to 60 pages for their half hour runtimes thanks to a very unique format. While single cam shows are written and shot more or less like a film, multicam shows are written to be performed in front of a live audience. In practice, they're much more like a stage play than a movie, usually including more limited sets and an emphasis on dialogue. And it's those differences that drive most of the multicam script's formatting changes. To emphasize the dialogue, the speech is usually double line spaced. I never do anything crazy. I'm always waiting for the moment, planning the moment. Well, she's leaving tomorrow. This may be the only moment I'm gonna get. I gotta do what that guy couldn't. Points to I gotta TV. take the leap. Off their looks. Okay, not a perfect metaphor, because for me it's fall in love and get married, and for him it's <laughs> and dialogue parentheticals are far more common, written in all caps, and embedded into the speech rather than given their own tabbed line. And you may remember from an earlier video that when dialogue is split by a page break... Now we've been talking to the other kids at school, and they get three meals a day. Now I know what you said, that food only leads to food poisoning, but we're willing to risk it. <laughs> Some writers add more to the bottom of the page, and continued to the character heading of the continued dialogue. While the more was optional for film and single cam TV, it's pretty much expected in a multicam sitcom. Again, like plays, multicam sitcoms rely far less on narrative description. The small amount of description that is included is written in all caps. Interior, city hall, day. We're in the main staff office, cluttered with desks, fax machines, computers, etc. A sense of barely controlled chaos. Off to one side, a door to the mayor's office. Michael with Karen. But this all cap description causes a bit of a chain reaction. Since all caps now can't be used for emphasis, character introductions become underlined. Maya crosses through on the way to the elevator. She stops at Jack, who is standing by the receptionist's desk. He's on the phone with Ali. Sounds are underlined too, sometimes along with the technical direction SFX, something you'd almost never see in a feature or single cam script. Jake, are you in your room? SFX, Jake running across the living room floor. Yeah. Some writers even underline transitions, despite the fact that they already stand out as being the only thing right aligned on the page. And you don't have to pay. Cut to. And because they are essentially well-coordinated stage plays, character movement becomes important enough to underline as well. Frazier enters from outside, coming home from work. You may have noticed that scene headings are also underlined in multicam sitcoms. Interior, physics department, cafeteria, late day. But they're usually also emphasized with a transition and page break. The scene is then given a number or letter, sometimes with the word scene before it, all underlined and written in all caps and placed about a third of the way down the page. If the scene begins a new act, you'll also write the name of the act in all caps, underlined and center near the top of the page before adding your scene number or letter and scene heading as normal. Act two, scene M, interior, Chandler and Joey's apartment, morning. And again, some writers like to indicate the end of the act on the previous page as well. Single line space just below the scene heading will usually be a list of characters in the scene. Act two, scene K, interior, coffee shop, day, Christy, Bonnie, Greg, extras. Most often written in parentheses, in standard caps, and with any extras listed last. Not every script lists the characters like this, but if you don't include it, you'll usually want to indicate all the characters in the scene in your first bit of description. Interior, station wagon, day. Dave and Gemma Johnson, 30s, and their son Grover, 6, ride in the packed car. But there is one big exception to this page break and characterless format. Continuous scene headings can be treated as part of the same scene, falling under the same letter or number. Meaning you don't have to break or list any characters before adding the continuous scene heading with standard line spacing. Jimmy, Bill, and Dave exit into the bullpen. 
Interior, bullpen, continuous. Bill and Dave in turn walk to Bill's desk, a coffee cup and half-eaten Danish are on the desk. Secondary headings and technical directions aren't common in multicam sitcoms, since there's rarely need to specify shots or subjects with so many cameras capturing options for the final edit. But when you do see them, they're also underlined and treated as part of the full numbered or lettered scene. I know on TV and in the movies, they like to make you think that there's a lot of corruption. Angle on, another student, Crystal. Of color. <laughs> to help keep track of the script pages for each full scene, the scene number or letter we keep talking about is often written below the page number in the header. I mean, it's more than okay, it's really okay. I mean, it's... What is wrong with you? 10B. I don't know. And you'll often see it wrapped in parentheses. The act is sometimes indicated here as well. Most commonly just using the Roman numeral for the axe and T or CO for the teaser or cold open. Now, did you ever have one of those math teachers that spent a week teaching you the hard way to solve an equation before showing you the much easier trick? If so, consider this a trigger warning. The truth is you should almost always stick to writing in the single cam format for original spec pilots. Meaning if you're writing the pilot episode of your own original series before anyone is paying you for it, single cam formatting is usually the best approach. Multicam sitcoms are far less common in modern television. The Office and Arrested Development removed their laugh tracks and garnered serious acclaim from critics and audiences, and for the most part, the industry hasn't looked back. It's a somewhat common approach for spin-offs and reboots of shows that had a live studio audience in their previous iterations, but it's rare to see completely new concepts written as multicams. In fact, it's so not the norm that when I was working a few years ago as a coordinator for readers who worked in TV, some exclusively, I had a number of them write coverage for multicam scripts where they had no idea what they were looking at and just assumed the writer didn't understand script formatting. Every reader is used to feature and single cam script formats, but very few that don't work directly for a multicam show producer see a multicam script even once a year. Plus, if a production company loves your single cam script but thinks it would work better multicam, it's not hard to change it. But a single cam only company reading a multicam format might dismiss it offhand for being old fashioned, or they might have issues with your multicam format because the rules are inconsistent across the industry. So inconsistent, in fact, that if you plan on writing a spec episode of an existing show, you should definitely get your hands on their scripts and simply copy their formatting. But if you're absolutely sure your original pilot needs a laugh track, then by all means, write your original in the general multi-camera format. And if you're not sure what I mean by a spec episode or an original pilot or something written on spec, you're not alone, which is why you should check out this video to make sense of this annoyingly confusing but incredibly important bit of terminology.